So one of the ways that I have shortened the little pre-talks that I can do it in about a minute or two is I, I kind of create a visual. And I say, I want you to think about it like this. I want you to imagine that there's this barrier here. And then on this side, can everyone see? On this side is your unconscious mind. Now remember, I'm still setting up conscious and unconscious, right? Dissociation. So we've got over here is where all of your habituated patterns are, but it's also where your body is, your immune system, you know, everything that is not consciously mediated is over here. It's where your emotions are, your long-term memories are stored. And, you know, for our purposes, your beliefs, your values, those blueprints, and the habits. Over here, right, this is about 97% of you. This little, little bit is your conscious mind. And your conscious mind is great for certain things. It can make plans. It can dream about the future. It can ruminate about the past. It can worry. It can obsess. Going back to time, the conscious mind keeps time. The unconscious mind, time doesn't exist. It's all happening now. To your body, your body doesn't make a distinction between the future, the past, and the present. So this is your unconscious mind. And you've got anything done with repetition, felt with repetition, even thought with repetition, eventually gets through that wall and creates a habit. Got it? So if you go to make a suggestion like, um, that's it, Monday, I'm not eating any sugar. That's it, I'm done with it. Anyway. I don't know if any of you have done that. It's always Monday, right? Um, Monday, I'm going to start or stop. Well, if that suggestion does not fit with the patterns already running, right? I'm going to quit smoking or I'm going to lose weight. If the pattern in here is that I'm a smoker or I have weight issues, then that suggestion is going to bounce right off that wall. The only ones that get in are the ones that have a pattern to connect to. Got it? So then I say, so here's what we're going to do today. With hypnosis, we go like this. And our suggestions will go right into where they're needed. Make sense? Now, sometimes I'll look at my client and they'll be like, like, that seems scary. So I'll say, and let me just <clears throat> normalize this a bit for you. Because this is happening all the time. You go in and out of this state where that barrier is down all the time. Let's just take one we can all relate to. Let's go to the movies. And then I say there's two things necessary for hypnosis to be present. A narrowing of attention and a pushing aside of the critical faculty of the mind. Two things. Right? So when you sit down in movie theater, the first thing you do is narrow your attention to the screen. Second thing you do, without even realizing it, is you knock that aside, otherwise known as suspend disbelief. And then I explain, if you didn't, and I think it's in the book too, if you didn't push that aside, you'd be watching that movie as if you were directing it. You would have no connection to your emotions, your beliefs, your values, Everything that draws us into a good movie, you'd never be able to forget that's an actor. Right? So we willingly push this aside, but pay attention, because this means you are highly suggestible. And that's why when they want you to jump, you jump. They want you to cry, you cry. You know it's not real. There's still that aspect of you that knows you're sitting in a movie theater. But because that barrier is down, they got you emotionally. Now here's where it gets interesting. Because when you're watching a movie and it gets really scary, your brain, your unconscious mind, will always err on the side of caution. You make sure to say this to them. It's there to protect you. So that barrier is down and the movie gets scary. That means your brain thinks you're in trouble. And so it doses you in adrenaline, noradrenaline, 
cortisol, all of the stress chemicals. It sends extra blood and oxygen to your arms and to your legs. You can fight or flight and you're just watching a movie. And everyone's like, I'm like, see, you've already been in those hypersuggestible states. Now let me show you how to make your own movies because unfortunately, you're already making your own movies. And you are always influencing your unconscious mind. Bless you. Because you are always going in and out of hypersuggestible states. You gotta be aware of the movies you're making. <laughs>